Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to clean up an STL, uh, specifically one that comes from scanning data, uh, specifically when there's hair in the data that didn't show up very well, in this case my beard and my eyebrows. So this is a 3D scan of my own head. It was taken with an Artex Spider at Terrapin Works at the University of Maryland. Um, it took about 45 minutes to capture, uh, but you'll notice that something about 3D scanning, just hair doesn't come up very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the hair, um, and sort of have the smooth face. We're also going to smooth out some of the other areas. Let me draw your attention to the bottom part of the neck. So this is weird protrusion coming out. We don't want that. Uh, and then you'll also notice that the ears are sort of messed up. We're going to do that in the subsequent video to this scanning digression. Okay. Uh, and also the nose sort of came out a little weird, specifically the nostrils. We're going to take care of that. Okay. So first thing you're going to notice is that this is one of the bigger files that we've used in the series. This has 11 million tri triangles. Uh, the actual size of the file is, mm, I don't know, but usually you don't have to check. It's just the number of triangles that's really going to affect it, which of course is a function of the size of megabytes. Great. Okay, so the first thing we're going to use is this new tool. So obviously we're going to go to selection. We're going to sort of select a given area. And then we're going to click F for the fix and replace. I believe that's what it's called. I just call it the F tool. So every, all the operations that we do are now going to take a little bit longer because we're operating as a large mesh. Okay, so what the F tool does is essentially it sort of repla like replaces it and fills in. It's as if you'd sort of uh, removed part of the mesh with X, you can imagine, and then uh, double click the edges and then filled it in which we can do in a moment. But that's, this just does it all in one operation. So let me actually, uh, and I think actually has better results. So let's do s refine is higher. Oh, it's going to take a while to think. So to regret doing that. That's okay. Oh, also sometimes you'll see that Mesh Mixer goes not responding. It's actually, it, I've, I've never had it crash if it's, if it's in this state, if I just let it sit. Um, so this is a time to sort of just wait. Don't double click. Don't move to another tab. You just have to deal with it. Okay, great. So it sort of fixed itself. So we say, okay, we like the fact I already clicked accept. So we like what it did, it's more or less. It's okay if it's not great. We can always come back and smooth it later. So we're going to do that on the other side as well. Come in, select part of it. You'll notice that I'm keeping the bottom part uh, or the, the top part of the chin and the bottom part of the chin separate for now. Um, that's because if you use the smoothing tool across sort of the jawline, it would smooth the jawline, which is not what we want. In fact, we're going to come back and, and, and artificially make the jawline a little bit more um, refined. I don't know what the word is. Uh, because the fact that there was hair and it didn't pick it up very well uh, was sort of problematic. Okay, so here's an example of us trying to use the, the F tool, and it's giving us a red selection. Uh, so we have this red selection and the reason is is because there's something wrong with our selection area. Now exactly what? I, I know I'm not actually precisely sure. I thought I had it figured out earlier but I do believe that it has something to do with having little occlusions of non-selected area within your larger selection area. Sometimes mesh mixer can sort of figure it out and fill it in anyways and sometimes it can't. So the way that I contend with this is you sort of escape the find and replace go back to your selection, you hold down control and then you use your mouse wheel to scroll up a little bit and you just expand your selection a little bit. And then any area that you were missing before usually is sort of rectified by this operation. So now I'm going to go back to the replace tool. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to get this sort of error message in the top left hand, not responding, nothing to worry about. And then bada bing bada boom, it's all fixed. So we say accept. We like the way it looks. I guarantee it. Don't sue me, Men's Warehouse. Uh, and we come in at the bottom, and we're going to do the same sort of same sort of thing. Okay, so something that you'll notice. Sorry, I'll talk about that in a moment. I guess while this is happening, something that you'll notice. Oh, that was really quick. Wow, I keep talking over myself. Something that you'll notice is that we have some kink peeking out on the outside. Now, if you'll remember from some of my earlier videos. I spoke about how in Mesh Mixer and in all STLs, you have a normal vector that either points inwards or outwards on your mesh. 
whenever you see this color, it means that your normal vector is pointing in the wrong direction. Or in this case, specifically, it's pointing out on the inside. Uh, sorry, it's the, the normal vector of this region right here, which we have to allow back faces in order to select. It doesn't actually show up very well in the software, but you'll notice if I hit X to delete it. In fact, we've deleted those faces. And you'll notice that over here, we have sort of this, this weird, like, multiple layers. That's not what you want to see. So let me show you a region that does look good. For example, this one. We just sort of expand it and make it nice. And then we delete it. And we sort of zoom in. You'll notice that there's only one layer, right? It's a single manifold. You can also sort of move yourself inside of the face, which is kind of cool. All right, well, eh, that's not relevant to this conversation. So basically, the fact that you have multiple faces over here, right? So right over here, these faces, that's not what you want to see. And the easiest way to fix that is let's just undo. Okay, so we still have, oh, we'll go back and do that again. We still have this region, and we're just going to sort of select around it expand our selection because obviously it's not really showing up um, that's sort of I don't know that happens on mine sometimes it might happen to you basically this is being selected even though it's not changing color there's something wrong with the software it's not a problem though then we just click F and you'll see that it totally goes away we say accept then when we go in to try to see what the inside looks like oh, is it gonna let me yes it is gonna let me Then we see it. Oh, it's all it's all perfectly nice and fixed. Great. So I'm gonna remove this base group. Control Shift G. Now it's fixed. We're gonna do the same thing over here, right? This is so you see that's pink. We don't like that's pink. We're gonna do F, A, accept, right? It's still quite messed up over here. So we're actually just gonna do that again. F A. Oh my gosh. Really? F A. Oh. Okay. We're gonna use smooth. Hopefully that fixes it. I'm going to do FA over here. Oh, dear. Okay, so there's something wrong at a larger sort of scale over here. So we're just going to sort of fix it like that, and that should be fine. Great. So that, that, that now, I expect, works. Let's redo the bottom because I, I undid too many operations at once. Not a problem. Say F. Say accept. Great. Okay. We're going to go back into Robust Smooth. Go back over here into Robust Smooth as well. Ah, but you'll notice. We have our favorite color, pink. It's right over here. We're going to reduce the size of our tool. Come over here, FA. And that's nice. We're going to go over here, use some robust smooth. Sort of get rid of some of these pores. We're going to take a look at, ooh. Yeah. So when we turn on the wireframe, we can see that the density of the mesh that was filled in afterwards was quite large. So it might be slowing us down a little bit more. You only want as much mesh density as is absolutely necessary, and in general, you don't want any more. So one way that you can sort of reduce that is you can sort of come in, select the area. This, In this particular case, this is not a useful thing to do, but it's a good thing to know. Um, if you ever have like a region that's just way too high to mesh density and it's, it's making your computer think a lot harder than it needs to, you can click R for reduce, um, and then you can increase the sorry R for remesh, actually. Hmm. Right, so I actually went in the opposite direction of what I wanted. So now if I go low density, then we're back in business. And you see that all the tools will operate a little bit more uniformly. The, the, oh, yeah, so that's another big point, is that the eff efficacy of a tool is completely dependent on the density of the mesh. If you have a very high-density mesh, then the tool oftentimes 
will work um, less intensely than if you have a really low density mesh. So let's, let's use an example. So I'm going to turn my chin into a super low density mesh by using the reduce tool. All right, so I'm going to select the whole chin. Great, so let me actually just get under the chin for a second. And then I'm going to do Shift R for reduce. So I can reduce by percentage, the number of triangles, right? That's these guys over here. And then the max deviation in terms of like millimeters. So if I wanted the max deviation to be only that much, right? Maybe I only want it to be this much from the original thing, then it'll, it'll from the original geometry, then it can sort of create mesh that fits that criteria. I want to do a triangle budget, let's say of a thousand. Let's say I only want. 500 triangles. That's sort of crazy. Okay, let's have that many. Let's say I wanted like four triangles. That's pretty crazy. I guess it did exactly as few triangles as it could to still like sort of maintain the geometry. So, anyways, four was a bad example. So let's say now I try to do robust smooth over here. Well, you'll notice that the effect here. Let's go off of wireframe. The effect of Robust Smooth over here versus the effect of Robust Smooth over here is quite different. And it's because when you have more triangles, the effect of all of your tools goes down. Now this can be very useful if you're trying to do very precise things. Right? So for let's, let's say, for example, I bring the strength of Robust Smooth like to one, right? just very light. When I touch it over here, you can see that it pretty much does nothing. But even on a strength of one, the effect of Robust Smooth is so dramatic. So it's really important to, to make sure that the triangle budget, the triangle density of the region that you're working with is appropriate for the tools that you're using. In general, you're going to want to make it higher unless, for example, the whole thing is too high. So now I'm just undoing every operation I just did to the chin. Okay, so let's go back. Let's use Robust Smooth over here. You know, I might just replace this region. A little soul patch. Goodbye. Okay. This region over here looks sort of messed up. This region over here. So I'm just quickly doing uh, FA. Pretty useful tool. Expand selection. FA. Rate. We're going to do that over here as well. FA. I sort of use FA and smooth interchangeably. That's not true. I usually use smooth if I want to smooth something, and FA if I just wanted to like remove some some sort of like complex thing, right? So if I do FA over here, you can see that it sort of disappears. I can do that actually to my entire nose. So let's make ooh, ooh, sorry. Um, let's make the selection tool quite large. So I select the nose, expand the selection, make sure that I got the whole nose. Great. Now if I do FA, right, goodbye nose. So essentially just smooths it with regard to whatever the rest of the mesh that you've been selecting. Pretty good to know about because that's probably the easiest way to remove like a feature like that. Also, this is really creepy to view myself like this, so I have to undo. I look like that one of the villains from Avengers Endgame. Okay. The one who's like, kneel before me. I feel like that's maybe all of them. Okay. Anyways, let's get back to this mesh mixing. So I suspect that this... Oh, ignore that G. Uh-oh. I have made a mistake. Okay, so what just happened was I was working too fast, and then I used... I accidentally double-clicked a region, selected the whole face, and then tried to do a global operation, and the mesh mixer just said no, which I'm really happy that it did. But that's okay. So we're going to keep working... F A. So notice that I have a dimple in the chin. I'm going to keep that dimple because I like it. And because those who know me know that I have it. Well, maybe not, but I don't know. I'm proud of it. I think it looks cool. So I'm going to sort of smooth out this region. You'll notice that I put the strength up really low. Got to bring that guy up. Smoothen out the interface, right? It's 
smooth and on up, smooth and on up. You better smooth up, ooh, 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 cause I need a smooth. Ooh. A little grease for you? Alrighty. Huh? Okay. So we did some smoothing. Now I'm gonna come back and do some de inflating, right? So I want what's what's my mesh density over here? Okay, so let's undo that. I don't like how it looked. I'm gonna add some density over here. So there's actually a tool that does that directly. It's called the refine tool. So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna draw. And you say, Saul, but you're changing the mesh. Well, I am, but I'm actually not changing the geometry. So if you come in over here, I'm still clicking. If I toggle, you'll still see that I'm adding more triangles, but I'm not actually changing the shape of the mesh, or at least not in a major way. Maybe, you know, parts that were a little bit more jagged, you know, a little less refined are a little bit more refined. But in general, you're just sort of adding triangles. So obviously, well, not obviously, you don't know what it looks like, but this is not what my chin looks like, fortunately. So we're going to add, we're going to try to make my chin look more uh, realistic. And that's easier to do if you have more triangles. So I might have just removed a number of triangles. No, it's fine. Okay, so let's bring refine up a little bit. Refinement up, reduce down. Okay. So we want to use the inflate tool. Okay, so we got to be really careful. Let's go front, sort of align ourselves here. Really careful here. I'm also going to mess with the jawline. So let me go a little smaller, actually. I don't like how strong that is. Okay. Not too big. We'll come in here. So I'm holding down control and then sort of just pushing in the mesh, moving back and back and forth like a paintbrush. I'm the digital Bob Ross, except there's no color here. Just pushing in. Oh, let's smooth this area too, actually. I think if I use Shift, yeah. Okay, so you can actually select um, primary brushes if you. Shift and hold, you'll notice that I'm going from the um, going from inflate to robust smooth. So I hold shift, I can go robust smooth. It's actually sort of underpowered right now. See the wireframe? Oh, yeah. So it's underpowered because the density of this mesh is just so great. Um, let's go back to robust smooth permanently or well, not permanently let's do refinement lower reduce higher and now you'll see that when I use it it's actually a much more effective tool right so that's fantastic So we're sort of going to come in here again with the inflate tool. Uh, you know, for this video, I think I'm just going to I'm just going to re just remove. I'm just going to I'm going to have no dimple. 
Let's go. Robust smooth. Refinement high. Reduce low. Uh, yeah. Okay. So usually you can get it to be a little bit better. Okay, great. Yeah, so sometimes you actually just want to change the shape of your tool or the size of your tool. Let's bring the strength way down. That was really intense. So things are happening too quickly every time I click the button. Great. So I want refinement to go a little bit higher, reduce to go a little bit lower, smooth to go higher. Let's see what's happening with the mesh. Practically nothing. Okay, so that's not great. All right, it's helping a little bit, so that's fine. So if you wanna, if you want to, right, you could come in and add sort of these other features. There's no real like instruction here. It's just sort of you do it until it looks right. come in and do some smoothing right over here right so that's not really what my chin looks like but just you know so that there is a dimple great okay so we sort of smoothed out the face we can sort of come in and keep patching it up Ooh, that's the wrong tool we can sort of come in and keep patching it up with robust smooth until it sort of looks right but that's sort of the general the general thing that you're going to do you're going to use robust smooth and if things don't go right then you're going to use inflate or flatten we're going to sort of do the same thing over here with the eyebrows. So select only the eyebrows, right? So I'm holding control and then clicking to do this. And then I hit F. Let's accept. All right, come in. Oh. Okay, so you see there's a little red region? That means there's something wrong. Very easy to fix. We use the inspector tool. So we go ahead and click I, and we say, oh, there's something wrong. We hit Q to accept the fact that there's something wrong. And now we say done, and we click inspector again. We say, oh, is there anything wrong, inspector? And they say, no. We say, thanks, inspector. The inspector doesn't say anything because it's a software tool. Great, you'll notice it's a little green now. I made a little face group. We don't care about that face group, so we're gonna select it away. Control Shift G. Oh, just kidding. We messed. Control Shift G, not T. Okay. Coming over here, do the same thing. Oh, let's just make our selection tool a little smaller. Come in here, do the same thing. Yeah, that's fine. Smooth. Increase the size. Let's sort of jump over to the other side. So reduce needs to be up a little bit if you want it to sort of do anything. Okay. All right, so let's go refinement high, reduce lower, and then if we make the thing smaller, it'll have more of an effect. Great. So we're going to come in here, smooth it out. No reason for this not to be smooth, right, guys? And gals. are fine. So it's pretty nice. Um, we're just going to come in here, fix this little region we talked about at the beginning of the video. Robust Smooth is our friend.
Okay, now here's something key. Whenever you're mesh mixing at the bottom surface of something, where it's going to print, or any flat surface for that matter, it's important to note that now this region right here is no longer flat. This part is flat, but this other part, here, let's make base groups. This part, or rather, this part is, is not flat, right? So I might have extended it to some flat parts. So let's remove the face group. And here's how I'm going to prove it to you that it's not flat. There's something called um, the way that you expand. So right now it's just a geodesic distance. Um, I don't really know what that means. But it, it basically means as you expand, it sort of just expands equally in all directions. At least practically, that's what it means when I use it. You can also change it by the crease angle. So that means when I hold down control and then I drag the right mouse button outwards, it'll only expand to things that have less than a certain crease angle. Or, just kidding. We have to, if you keep dragging it, it'll select the whole part, right? But if you drag it only a little bit, excuse me, if you drag it only a little bit, it'll select only the flat faces, which is great. So you'll notice that the crease angle between these two vertices, or between all of these vertices, is zero. And the crease angle here, this region that I selected earlier, is a little bit higher. So that's how you know it's not flat. So how do we compensate for that? Well, we just do a plane cut, right? So if we look at it right now, see that there's, oh, there's some regions that aren't flat. Let's finish sort of smoothing out this area. So let's go back to Robust Smooth. Make it a little bit larger. Having a good time. Right? So we want this region to be a little bit more smooth. Great. Smooth out this guy. No problem. Smooth this out. Why not? Smooth out the back. Why not? Some weird neck stuff. Okay. So now we're going to go into edit, plane cut, we're going to drag our plane cut friend down, just over the general region, we're going to change it from being a local frame as indicated by W to a world frame, just so that you see that when you change the world frame, it doesn't change these like arrows, and when you change it to a local frame, and then you rotate it, it does, that can be useful sometimes. And then when you click S, you can move it up and down by, uh, that just is, is indicative of having the scale. And then A is absolute. Oh, I actually don't know what A is. I think A just means that you can move up and down without it clicking to certain like sort of degrees. Right, so not degrees. So if you look here with the scale, if I move up with S selected, it's going up by 0.25 millimeters. But I don't want it to go up by 0.25. I want it to go up by some arbitrary amount. And so by selecting A, you can see that I can so oop. Well, is it not working? Let's remove the scale. So now I can go up by some arbitrary amount. So that's great. I'm not actually sure what those buttons do. I just know that if you click them, if the certain if you have the right combination of them clicked, then it allows you to to sort of do whatever you want in terms of doing a plain cut whether it's like clicking or not clicking. Okay, so I digress. Sort of want the bottom to be like this. This is fine for me. You have a couple of options. You can you can actually keep both parts if you wanted to, but for the purpose of this video, we won't be doing that. So I'm just say accept. Now we see that the bottom is a different color. You can sort of select it because it's a base group, delete the base group. And now we're, we're done, at least for removing the hair and doing a plain cut. So that's how to edit part of a scan.